Tata na ako. And you see, before long, he's spending more time thinking about how to steal than he is about how to find work. Asi musho e atamaliza ang katiwati ang kini bilay ko iba na wajan na butabta. But when the spirit of truth comes, when we decide I'm going to speak the truth and and act the truth, no matter what, I'm going to let God take care of me. Ro ya kweli kitu ingia na nimetu tuju akamba tutasema ukweli haijadishi kwa namna gani basi ilo itatusaidia. We start to heal. We start to have the process. Tunaanza kuponywa, tunaanza kuponywa katika maisha yetu. And that is a process. Na hiyo ni inachukua muda because One area of truth leads you to another area of truth. Maana atua hii ya ukweli inapongoza kwenda kwa hatua nyingine ya ukweli. And we have the four uh, primary areas of life: spiritual, physical, emotional, and financial. Na tuko na sehemu nne ya maisha ambayo kila mara tumejifunza hapa baadhi ya roho, kimwili, kiuchumi na vingine. So it's a, a lifelong process for us to continue to find truth. Na mm, mkondo wa ukweli inaendelea kutafuta ukweli It's a big mistake for religious organizations to say we have the truth Ni makosa kubwa sana kwa dini zetu kusema ya kwamba tuna ukweli Because once you say I have the truth you're no longer looking Ah uh, maana tukisema tumepata hilo kweli basi hatutafuta ukweli tena Number three is called emotional maturity na hii ya tatu inaitwa isia ya ukuaji. And that's what's happening. Ama ukuaji wa isia. As the ch- child learns to think more. Wakati mtoto anaanza kupata nafasi ya kwanza kufikiri, they, they don't start crying so quickly. Hawali tena haraka haraka. They start figuring out their problems. Wanaanza kutatua mawa, eh, matatizo yao. And so emotional maturity there was a statement that I read about it last week that really made a lot of sense. Uh, ukuaji wa kimawazo kuna somo aliyesoma wiki ijana refuse to be offended kataa kukwaswa when people ignore or are mean or rude to you wakati watu wanakataa kukutambua wewe ama wanakuwa wagumu kwako they're revealing themselves wakijitambulisha kwako they're telling you what's within themselves Ah uh, wanakuambia kile kilicho ndani mwao and not what's within you. Lakini si kilicho ndani yako wewe. How you treat those who mistreat you reveals your emotional and spiritual maturity. Vile utawatenda wale ambao wanakutendea vibaya ndio itaonesha jinsi ukuaji wa moyo wako ulivyo. It's the same is true in reverse and so if it's good to refuse to be Uh, offended when people ignore you or are mean or rude to you you shouldn't ignore or be rude or mean to other people Ipo ipo kwamba watu wakiwa na wakiburi kwako ama watu hawajali wewe haitakikani pia wewe useme mimi sitajali wao kwa sababu wako ni jali You know it's common for us to love those who love us and take care of those who take care of us Maana maandiko yanatuambia tuwapende hata maadui zetu wale wanatutukia tu apende pia na wao Matthew 5:44 has a different come this side Audrey come over here Bibi nasema lakini mimi nawaambia wapendeni adui zenu waombeni wanao waudhi ili mpate kuwa wana wa baba yenu aliye mbinguni maana yeye huangazia jua lake waovu na wema huonyeshea mvua wenye haki na wasio haki So it says I say love your enemies pray for those who persecute you and in that way you will be acting as true children of your father in heaven for he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good and he sends rain to the just and the unjust alike. So do you feel like praying for those who have mistreated you? Nidiamo kuombea wale ambao wanatutukiza. How many of you when somebody is really mistreated you you just say oh I just want to go pray for that person. Ni wakati wenu wamewahi kukozwa na mtu ama kukosewa na mtu na wakachukua hatua ya kwenda kuwaombea. I just want to bless them. Nataka kwenda kuwabariki. So no that's not what we want to do. Ah hiyo ndio kitu tungetaka kufanya. So we have to make an intentional effort. Ni lazima tukusudia kufanya jambo to operate out of what God tells us to do 
tena kama vile Mungu anatuambia tutende na hiyo ndio ukweli wa hali ya maisha and this is the feeling side of life na hii ni hisia kuongozwa na hisia tu he say well i can't pray for these people i don't feel like praying for them na siwezi kuombea hao watu kwa sababu nina hisi vibaya siwezi kuombea but can you hate somebody and pray for them at the same time je unaweza chukia mtu na bado tena utamuombea not really haiko lazima kusamee kwanza mpende ju muombe so as you pray for these people you begin to find out that you start to look at them like god looks at aha ni wakati tunapoanza kuwasamea na kuwaombea ni vizuri kuwaona kama vile mungu anavyowaona you start to realize that maybe the way they treated you the way they did is because they have trauma ha unagundua ya kwamba pengine hata wale kutenda hivyo kwa sababu tayari wana msongo wa mawazo I, I don't know if I'm going to do a lecture on that or not but it's called ASPD antisocial personality disorders uh, antisocial hali uh, wow was <laughs> Okay. Anti, how would you say antisocial personality disorders? Okay, yani anamaanisha kwamba unaingia katika hali ya isiyo ya sintofahamu lakini si ya mazingira ambayo uko ndani ni mazingira ya kiwengi. Asante kwa kusaidia hapa So before we do that with Omaya and I left out a long discussion because those are bigger words. It's <laughs> there but I'll just say it briefly in English is narcissistic people or sociopaths and psychopaths and there are people who are called created narcissists which a lot of people would fall into that category and a narcissistic person is someone who focuses on themselves watu ambaye wana ubinafsi ni wale watu ambao wanapenda kuangalia mambo yao peke yao so uh, these people know how to trigger your you emotionally how watu wanajua jinsi ya kuchokoza wewe na uweze kukasirika. And they're not honest people. They're not in the high energy zone. Hao watu si wa kweli, si wa aminifu. They might be pretending to be a good person. Wana ni wana watu wanajifanya kuwa wazuri. But in reality they want to control you. Lakini kwa kweli ni kwamba wanataka kukutumia vibaya. I'll give you one illustration. It's called uh, gaslighting. Gaslighting. In the olden days, gas. There, there used to be a, a light hanging on the wall that was that was powered by gas. Yeah. Okay. And so, the story was told that there was two men that lived together in, a, in an apartment, and they both had their own gas light. Ah. Uh, anasema kuna watu wawili waliishi nyumba moja na wote walikuwa na ile taa ya kutumia ya kutumia gesi and they would be reading at night one was reading the newspaper one was reading a book ah uh, mmoja alikuwa wote walikuwa nasoma usiku na na mmoja alikuwa nasoma biblia na mmoja alikuwa nasoma gazeti and this guy over here wanted to control this guy na huyu mmoja alitaka kutumia huyo mwingine vibaya ama kuongoza huyu mwingine so when this guy got up to go out inside and use the toilet, we mmoja alipotoka kwenda kujisaidia or to get a drink, ama kwenda kupiga maji, this one come up and he turned the gas down a little bit. Na basi huyu mmoja wao anakuja na kupunguza gesi yake iende chini. And th- th- this man come back in and he said, "Wow, I'm having trouble reading." Ah, uh, ule aliporudi hakujua kwamba ile gesi yake imepunguziwa akaanza kushangaa na hii giza imetoka wapi namna hii siwezi soma he looks at the light and he thinks the flame is a little lower uh, na akaangalia ile taa yake na akaona kama ni eh, moto imeanza kwenda chini kidogo and he asks his friend did you change my light akauliza huyu mwingine je ulimbadilisha hii nini ama hapana and because the friend is in the negative zone na kwa sababu huyu mwingine hako katika hali ya kuchushwa he twists that question around akaibadilisha uh, uh, swali hilo he said it looks like the same light that's always been there na akasema ninaona hiyo nuru kama hiko sawa meaning the same fixture uh, kumaanisha kwamba kila alichotengeneza so he's implying i didn't change the light 
ili kukuweka katika mawazo ya huyu ya kwamba yeye hakufanya lolote juu ya hilo taa and so the next day the guy goes out to get a drink and he turns the, the light up a little na uh, aliporudi huyu alipotoka yeye na kurudi akaongeza tena taa so the man comes back in he said oh tonight i can i can see fine no problem uh, siku ya pili ule alipokuja sasa ah na leo sasa iko sawa naweza soma and so his friend says well maybe your eyesight is going bad maybe you're becoming blind na kaanza kumwambia huyo pengine umeanza kukonjeka ni kama macho yako inaanza kuharibika and he starts messing with his mind na kaanza kuroga akili ya huyo mwingine then he waits maybe two days or three days ah uh, mara mbili mara tatu and he turns the light down again na akarudisha tena moto chini and so then he says oh i, I can't read again i don't know akasema na ina hii macho yangu inaanza kuharibika hata leo tena sisome vizuri and so then the friend says but you can see the lamp is the same lamp it's always been. Na akamwambia hiyo taa si ni ile ile tunatumiana. And so this goes on until this guy loses confidence in his own ability to understand what's going on. Basi inaendelea hivyo na huyu anakosa kujiamini katika hali zake ya ya afya ya mwili wake. The other one says I think you need to go to the eye doctor. Na akaanza kumwambia basi inaonekana itabidi uende kwa daktari. Goes the eye doctor the eye doctor said your eyes are fine. Na anaenda kwa daktari wa, wa macho na mwambia na mimi naona macho yako ni sawa. I think you need to go to the psychiatrist. You're losing your mind. Na basi anamwambia uende katika yule mtu wa, wa, wa ushauri wa mawazo kwa sababu ni kama akili yako inaanza kuwa na shida. Uh, have you been drinking? I think you've been drinking. Na anamwambia ama umekuwa ukinywanga? Mimi nafikiri una ukinywanga. Have you been taking drugs? Ama umekuwa ukinywa madawa? You see all these accusations that's what a a, 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 a gaslighter will do is throw accusations at people. Aha, hivyo ndio vile ilivyo watu wengine wanatumia watu vibaya na kuwaweka katika lawama. And they begin to accuse you and it causes you to go up emotionally. Na anaanza kukulaumu na inakufanya wewe unaanza kuhisi vibaya na kukasirika. And then when you have a negative reaction, wakati unakuwa na Uh, uh, they accuse you that, that you, 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 you don't even act right. Uh, anaanza kukulaumu wewe katika mambo ambayo pengine sio wewe mwenyewe umefanya. You don't even act like you used to act. I think something's going on in your brain. Umekuwa haufanyi namna hii. Siku hizi wewe umekuwa mtu mbaya. Some of the people who are really really bad at controlling other people. Watu wengine wanakuwa wabaya kiasi ya kuanza kuongoza wengine vibaya. Are people in power? Uh, wa, wa, watu ambao wako katika mamlaka big business owners watu walio na biashara kubwa kubwa politicians wanasiasa leaders of religious organizations watu walio katika dini zingine doctors hata madaktari and they love to, to, to feel their power over other people uh, wanapenda kutumia nguvu za watu wengine so you can go to the doctor and he can say you have this illness Ah, uh, unaenda kwa daktari na nakwambia ninaona wewe uko na ugonjwa hii. And he decides I want to experiment on this one. Na anakwambia ninataka kukutenda jambo juu hili. So he says for this illness I think you have to do this treatment. Ah, uh, kwa sababu ya matibabu ya ugonjwa huu ni lazima uchukue madawa hii. And this person was like I've never heard of that treatment. Na mtu anasema mimi sijawahi kwa hivyo. So they start messing with their mind. They say Na anaanza kuharibu akili yako. Your disease is very rare. Na anakuambia ugonjwa huu si ya kawaida. So they ask do I have to take this treatment that seems really weird. Na anamwambia je ni lazima nitumie madawa haya inaonekana kama si kawaida. And the person the doctor says no it's okay if you don't want to take the treatment you can die it's okay. Na daktari anamwambia basi ni jukumu lako kama utakutumia madawa utakufa. But of all of those you see what they're doing is they're trying to to make you think that they affect your future. Ah uh, anataka kukufanya uone ya kwamba haya yataadhiri siku zako za usoni. But most of them can only affect this life. Lakini wengi wao watagusa uh, maisha yako. So the very worst one though is the religious leader who's a dishonest religious leader. Ni iliyo mbaya sana ni yule mtu kiongozi wa dini ambaye si uh, kweli. Because he makes you think not only will it affect this life but it will affect your future. Maana anakufanya unaona kwamba si katika maisha ya ulimwengu tu maana hata inaonekana hata katika maisha ya mbinguni ya umilele itagusa mimi pia. But meanwhile 
They might be living down here in this in this negative zone. Inaweza kuwa anaishi katika hali ya maisha ya chini. They might be hiding a side chick somewhere. Na ana chikicha katika mambo fulani. They might be using corruption to get money. Na wenda anatumia hali ya ufisadi kupata pesa. And they're trying to tell they're trying to they feel bad about themselves. Ah wana hisi vibaya juu ya hao wenyewe. And they pass that bad feeling on to you. Na anapitisha hali zao katika wewe. And so what happens then is they will begin to accuse you like this gaslighter. Ah anaanza kukulaumu wewe kama jinsi yule mtu aliyekuwa anatumia ile taa ya gas. And they will begin to project their sins on you. Na wanaanza kuweka mira ya ya ya, ya dhambi zao katika wewe. Uh, the religious organization that I used to be a part of, they told me, "Well, you have a lying spirit." Ah, uh, uh, katika ile dini ambayo amekuwa katika ushirika kule, wanamwambia kwamba una roho ya kufanya dhambi. Ya uongo. Lying spirit. Oh, ya yeah, uko na uko na roho ya udanganyifu. And because I had some training, I didn't fall for it. Na kwa kini kwa sababu yeye alikuwa amefundishwa alikuwa na, na ufahamu hakuingia katika mawazo hiyo. Had I had no training it would have really really triggered me emotionally. Na kama yeye hangekuwa amefundishwa na kuwa na mawazo mazuri angeingia vibaya sana katika chakula. Uh, so what, what, how, what, where am I lying? You have to show me, you have to lead me. Na kama basi ana ukweli ya kuwauliza ni nini nimedanganyia elezeni mimi ni nini nimedanganyia. But because I had some training na, lakini kwa sababu alikuwa amefundishwa I said okay so how does this lying spirit work I didn't allow my emotions to guide my question Basi akawa naye ana swali kwao hii roho ya udanganyifu inatenda kazi aje We allowed truth and logic to guide our question Ina tunaruhusu ukweli na ufahamu tulio nao kuongoza sisi I said how does this lying spirit show itself because That's why my customers like me. I never lie. Ah, anasema uongo huo unaonekana namna gani kwa sababu mimi nina ukweli kwamba hata wateja wangu wananipenda kwa sababu sitangani. And the church leader says, "Well, we're not accusing you of telling lies, we're accusing you of believing lies." Ah, akamwambia kwamba basi atukulaumu ya kwamba unasemanga uongo, lakini wewe uamini uongo. And when people accuse you Don't react. Just to keep asking questions. Watu wakikulaumu tafuta ukweli, uliza maswali. Kosa lako ni nini? Ask questions to get the facts. Uliza maswali ndio upate ukweli kwamba una uko hali hiyo ama hauko hali hiyo. I said okay, so how does that work? I don't speak lies but I believe lies. So how does that work? Akawauliza, "Je, inafanya kazi namna gani kwa sababu mimi mwenyewe sisemi uongo lakini naamini uongo. Inafanya kazi namna gani?" And they said, "Well, you have friends all over the US and in Canada. <coughs> you you tell them your side of the story and they give you advice." Aha, uh-huh. anasema wana marafiki kule mambo pengine Canada na nchi zingine na wanaongea na wao na wanaopatia hao na mpatia ushauri but because they don't know the whole story they they don't know how to give you good advice so it's lies aha anasema kwa sababu unaongea na wao na wajui ukweli wa maneno wanakupatia ushauri ulio mbaya and you're believing those lies na unaanza kuamini uongo wao i said okay so let me get this straight i'm believing lies but i'm not telling lies basi anasema wacha ni nifahamu vizuri mimi sisemi uongo lakini naamini uongo basi wanasema hapo sasa ni ukweli kwamba wewe hausemi uongo lakini wewe unaamini uongo basi anasema mambo haya huja ukiwa uongo Ninaizungusha ndani ya mawazo yangu lakini ninapoitoa ninapoitoa natoa ikiwa ukweli. Anasema basi hiyo basi haifanyi kazi. Hiyo sio kweli. So you see their emotional manipulation tactic didn't work that time. Wajua kuna jinsi watu wanaweza tumia watu katika uh, hali ya udanganyifu. Other questions uh, that I received about this lesson was Uh, good evening. My question on emotional trauma from the chart on trauma responses. What can we do to recover from harm? Aha, anasema mtu aliuliza swali ameandika kama uliza swali ya kwamba 
tutafanya nini kutoka katika hali ya msongo wa mawazo ili niweze kutoka katika hali ya kusema tuulizwa jambo unasema eh hey, ni hivyo ni hivyo ni hivyo yani hakuna vile unaweza sema hapana mtu ameuliza swali inaweza fanya nini kutoka katika hilo and it could have been any of them it could have been five fly trees or fawn but that particular person said how do i recover from fawn anasema mtu aweze kuwa katika hizi zote lakini mtu anauliza nitatokaje katika hizi tabusha and so fawn is the one who is the people pleaser they feel overwhelmed they don't have good boundaries hawa ni watu ambaye wamekubali kutumika yani akiulizwa si twende anasema ndio akiuliza utakula ndio hautakula ndio yani anataka kutukuridhisha yule anayeuliza swali and so because they recognize that, that, that they have this problem they're well on the way to recovery ah na kwa sababu wamegundua kwamba wako katika hali hizo basi wameanza safari ya kuanza kuponya the number 5 said the first step towards true freedom and that be freedom from being controlled by your emotions is to take responsibility for your outcomes hatua ya kwanza ya kutoka katika kifungo cha 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 kandanganywa ni kwanza kujua ukweli and we need to align ourselves number 6 we need to align with the perception with our perception of reality ni lazima tuunganishwe pamoja na dhana ya ukweli katika maisha yetu I said that wrong. We need to align our perception with reality. Aha, anasema vizuri, anasema ni vizuri kuunganisha vile tunavyowazia ama vile tunavyodhania na ukweli. Now with any of these the reason that we have these trauma responses is because we're operating out of fear. Ah, kwa nini tunayo a uh, um, msongo wa mambo katika maisha yetu ni kwa sababu tunafanya kazi na uoga we're afraid of what will happen if we speak the truth or act the truth tuna uoga ya kile kitatokea wakati tumeongea ukweli you know these uh, pastors that swindle people uh, and they're all over the world wachunga kuna wachungaji ambao huwa wanaibia watu ni dunia mzima hivyo wanaibia watu a large the way religion is evolved it has evolved into a business vile watu wameifanya dini kuwa biashara and i'm not saying that as a blanket because there are some good people out there who are doing who are saying hivyo kuwafanya nyinyi kuhusisia uoga katika dini lakini kuna watu walio wazuri watumishi wa Mungu lakini kuna wachache walio wabaya but you know i consistently i hear people from both sides of the world or they say religion has turned into a business mana mara kwa mara amesikia watu wengi katika ulimwengu mzima wakisema watu wameibadili dini kuwa biashara it's about how can i get more money out of ah, na watu wanaangalia ni nini nitapata sana katika biashara hiyo how can i grow my church bigger and i have nicer clothes aha anasema kwamba ni watu wazia tu bila wataifanya kanisa kuwa kubwa na waweze ku kujifika and so these people who come under this person who is a manipulator they fear to speak the truth ah watu wote ambao wamekuwa chini ya watu ambao wanatumia wengine vibaya wana uoga wa kusumuza ukweli a manipulator will use all kinds of methods to continue to control you watu kama hao wanatumia mbinu zote ili kuweza kuweka uoga ndani mwako kukutumia vibaya and some of those methods are very very ungodly njia hizo nyingi si za kiungu and it's it's ironic that they can say i'm a follower of christ but do ungodly things ah watu hawa wanasema ni wafuazi ama wanamwabudu Mungu lakini wanafanya mambo ambayo si ya kiungu. But the fact of the matter is that these people down here never prosper. Hawa ukweli ni kwamba watu hawa hawawezi kuendelea. In the end they get found out one way or another. Ah katika mwisho wa mambo yao hawawezi kuwa upande huu na hawawezi kuwa upande huu. Bible said some men's sins are revealed in this, this life, some men's sins they follow after. Ah uh, Biblia inasema kwamba mambo ya watu wengine yatadhihirika hapa na wengine yao itawafuata hata katika 
enzi inayokuja so the real real crafty ones they may never get caught in this life but that's a bad mistake because they're going to get caught in the next life aha watu wengine katika hao ni kwamba mambo haya wanaweza patikana nayo hapa lakini wasiopatikana naye basi itawafuata katika ufalme unaokuja. But the interesting thing that you'll find about speaking the truth and acting the truth is that as your energy comes up, your safe space inside of you comes up. Basi ukweli ya mambo ni kwamba wakati tunapoinuka juu na basi tunaanza kuongea ukweli inatia ndani mwetu nafasi iliyo nzuri ya ya haki. And there is a mathematical equation for that. Na basi kuna hesabu inayofanywa juu ya hiyo. It's also a biblical equation. Na ni Biblia hesabu ya kibiblia. As you walk in the light, you can see better. Aha, ya kwamba tukitembea katika nuru, basi tutaweza kuona wazi mambo. And the light is the light of truth. Na ukweli nuru hiyo ni ukweli ni nuru ya ukweli. And it's also Uh, forgiving people ni sehemu ya kuwasamea watu katika maisha yetu because the bible says unless you forgive those who have wronged you you can't be forgiven by your heavenly father maana biblia inasema msipowasamee hao basi nawe baba yetu aliye mbinguni hawezi kutusamea makosa zetu pia so if you're hanging on to some trauma that happened to you 15 years ago maana ukishikilia mambo yaliyokufanyikia miaka 15 iliyopita ni lazima ujaribu kuajilia mambo haya ndio uko na jua hapo patikana as we let that go we began to feel god letting us go basi tukiachilia tuki haya yote nasi tutaanza kuhisi ya kwamba Mungu naye anatufungua and our spirit begins to be free na nyoyo zetu zinaanza kuwa uh, huru and we began to live in what's called affirmation na tunaanza kuishi maisha ya kuhisi ya kwamba Mungu anatutambua life starts to look feasible na uh, maisha yetu inaanza kuwa wazi we start to see opportunities na tunaanza kuona uh, uh, matarajio katika maisha yetu we start to have hope na tunaanza kuwa na matumaini. So as we align what we feel or what we believe with reality. Na basi tukianza kuangalia mambo yetu katika hisia na ukweli. We can come out of those bad situations. Na tunaanza kutoka katika hali zetu mbaya. And the verse for that is uh, John 8, uh, John 8:32. Bibi mimi nasema tena tena mtaifahamu kweli nayo hiyo kweli itawaweka huru it says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free ukweli huo tukimfahamu nayo ukweli itatuweka huru so you know the truth about who you are as how you relate to god na unajijua ukweli kwamba wewe ni nani na jinsi unavyohusiana na mungu wako and you know the truth that i'm no longer in that situation that traumatized me na unajua ukweli kwamba nimetolewa ndani ya kile jambo ambacho kilikuwa inaniumiza that abusive relationship i was in is back there behind me ah uh, kile hali ya maisha ama uhusiano ambao ulikuwa umekunyanyasa basi huko pamoja na wewe tena imerudi nyuma yako na ile ile ajali iliyonipitia wakati ule haiko tena nimeponywa na tena siko kwa hiyo ajali kwa hivyo uchungu umeisha whatever it is that traumatized you back there i'm not in that situation basi unakubali ya kwamba yale yale kufanyikia yamepita hauko tena ndani ya hiyo kwa hivyo usirudishe mawazo yako katika jambo hilo if you are still in a traumatizing situation and you can't take yourself out of it because you're a child or whatever that is a difficult situation basi iwapo haukubali kutoka katika jambo hilo unabaki ndani mwake kwa kile kilichofanikiwa miaka mingi basi inakuwa jambo ngumu kwako basi ukiungamanishwa na Mungu unapata matumaini na basi unapata kufunguliwa mawazo yako another step of healing from emotional trauma or overcoming uh, these things is in number 7 basi hali ya kuti kumbwa katika mambo haya iko katika nambari ya saba and that is it's called allowing feedback or our observing ego to, to help us make a course correction ah uh, ni vizuri kusikia kutoka kwa watu wengine uh, hali yako ndio itusaidie kuweza kurekebisha mambo yetu 
Now feedback is when I've been traumatized and are triggered and I have a, a negative reaction, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And after the river of emotions comes down, then my friend comes and says, Stuart, something happened here yesterday. Uh, you, your, your emotions went up and you, you became very harsh. Ni wakati ambapo jambo umefanyika jambo katika maisha yako na vile umereact kwa hiyo jambo watu wengine wameiona kesho yako anakuambia kwa wakati umetulia anakuja na kuambia ya pole jambo hilo lilikupata lakini jinsi ulivyofanya haikukuwa vizuri observing ego is where i've listened to him and the next time it happens I can I can sense it in myself but I something happened to me and I became very harsh. Ah, kusikia hivyo inasaidia kwa sababu ninagundua kwamba jambo hili likifanyika inanifanya vibaya. Kwa hivyo wakati mwingine ukifika ikinifanyikia ninachitunga alisirudia tena hivyo. But we always have that option of ignoring the, the feedback. Na na basi kuna uamuzi wa hata kukataa kutosikiliza kile unachoambiwa. And so Lamai could come and say, uh, you were very harsh yesterday. Na mimi naweza kuja kumwambia, ah jana ulikuwa mkali sana. I said no no, I'm fine. I was at peace. Ah uh, anasema hapana, mimi nilikuwa sawa tu hata sikuwa na hasira sana hivyo. Waje uliona vibaya. Everything is good. Na kila jambo ni sawa. Just take care of your own business. Na mwambie wajali mambo yako usijali. Take care of my business. Na mimi pia naendelea na yangu na naangalia mambo yangu vizuri. If I got if I got improved if I Eh, nitabadilika ikiwa nitafanya hivyo. No, we have to. Awezi badilika ni vizuri kusikia kutoka kwa wenzao. We have to allow somebody else to insert truth. Ni vizuri kukubalia watu wengine kusema ukweli ndani juu ya maisha yetu. Into our emotional house. Ili ya juu ya nyumba yetu ya isia Number 8 this one is a good one too Mali ya 8 ambayo ni nzuri sana How much can someone grow that's the question and here's the answer the degree to which someone can grow is directly proportional to the amount of truth that you can accept about themselves and not run away Ah uh, anasema kwamba ni kiwango gani mtu anaweza kukua katika uh, maisha yake inategemea ina, ina usawa na ukweli ambao uko ndani mwake. Uh, Jesus was really really good at that. Yesu alikuwa mzuri sana katika jambo hili. He uh, told the Pharisees he says you're nothing but white sepulchers full of dead men's bones. Ah uh, aloambia kwamba nyinyi uh, si kitu tu ni sawa tu na na wafu. They couldn't improve because they ran away from that truth. Na maana wange badilika kwa sababu wanatoroka ukweli. But the Syrophoenician woman, remember she came to Jesus? Na kumkeni tu yule mama aliyemkujia Yesu. And he said, should we give that which belongs to the children to the dogs? Na kamuuliza, "Je, tunaweza kumpatia chakula ya watoto kwa mbwa?" She says, "Truth, Lord." I'm a dog, but can't the dogs at least have the crumbs from the master's table? Ah, kasema yeah, bwana, ni sawa mimi ni mbwa lakini je, mbwa si ana haki ya kukula katika kile kimeangua katika bwana wake? And that was one of the few people in the Bible that Jesus said great is your faith. Ah, ni watu wachache ambao Yesu aliambiwa mna imani kubwa. When we recognize where God is compared to where we are, Uh, tukikubali kile ambacho Bwana anatufananisha ama anasema tulivyo tunatambua kwamba tunahitaji neema hiyo na tunatambua kwamba hatukufaa neema hiyo na tuna tafuta imani hiyo kama vile huyo mama alivyotafuta kwa sababu alijua yeye si mwenye haki. Na tunafikiria kwa imani. Ah, unamwambia Bwana mimi niko na e, msongo wa mawazo. Mimi nimekuwa na hali ya uchungu katika maisha yangu. Bwana unisaidie. God is the great physician. He knows how to heal us. Bwana ni daktari mkuu, tabibu mkuu katika maisha yetu. I'll have Audrey read uh, James 
Biblia inasema kwa maana kama mtu ni msikiaji tu wa neno wala hatendi kile linachosema yeye ni kama mtu ajitazamaye uso wake kwenye kio na baada ya kujiona alivyo huenda zake na mara usahau jinsi alivyo lakini yeye anayeangalia kwa bidii katika sheria kamilifu ili iletayo uhuru naye akaendelea kufanya hivyo bila kusahau alichosikia bali akalitenda atabarikiwa katika kile anachofanya kama mtu akidhani ya kuwa anayo dini lakini hauzui ulimi wake kwa hatamu kujidanganya moyoni mwake wala dini yake mtu huyo haifai kitu dini iliyo safi isiyo na uchafu inayokubalika mbele za Mungu Baba yetu ndio hii kuwasaidia yatima na wajane katika dhiki zao na kujilinda usitiwe madoa na dunia It says here if you listen to the word but don't obey it's like glancing at your face in the mirror you just take a quick glance and you walk away and you forget what kind of a person you are and so that's what happens when we're presented with truth but we run away from it we forget what we are ilo ilo inatufanikia kama ya kwamba tunajua ilo kweli na kile tunakataa kutenda hiyo kweli tunaitoroka but it says if you look carefully into the God's perfect law that can set you free. Basi lakini kama utatazama ilo sheria vizuri basi sheria hiyo itakuweka uhuru. The next question I have here uh, I combine several questions and put them together. Number 9. Maria Tisa. If someone has misused you or abused you and you have vivid reoccurring memories how can you overcome this and be free? kama mtu alikutenda vibaya na unaona jambo hilo dhahiri katika mawazo yako basi unaweza kujitoa ndani namna gani katika jambo hilo there's there's two predominant answers that I'm going to give there's several answers but there's two predominant answers lakini ana majibu mawili kuna majibu mengi zaidi hayo lakini ana mawili ambayo angetaka kutoa one is you have to accept that it happened ni lazima ya kwanza kujiponya ni kwamba ni lazima ukubali ya kwamba yalitendeka na kaisha. Usually it involves loss. Yeah, sana sana inahusiana na kile ulichopoteza. When we have loss there's several stages of grief that we go through. Na tukipoteza ni kuna kiwango ya uchungu ambaye inapita ndani mwetu. Uh, I'll just name them quick there's a first stage is denial. Kiti ya kwanza ni kukataa. Uh, the next stage might be might be anger. Kiti ya pili ni kwamba unaweza baki na uchungu na ile uchungu tena haya hiyo ingine ni kujaribu kupiga mnada sio kupiga mnada ni kujaribu kuangalia hiki na kile ilicho bora bargaining is like if i hadn't have done this maybe this wouldn't have happened to me yeah hiyo ni kujaribu kuangalia hili na kile kuona kilicho bora na basi mawazo yako itakuwa inakimbiza hiki na kimbiza kile tunapitia hali ya msongo wa mawazo kwa nini haya yamenipata na ya mwisho ni kukubali this thing they said they bring it back i should have known they wouldn't bring it back unajaribu kuangalia kama ningelifanya hile na kama ningekuwa nimefanya hili hili jambo halingenipata when you get through that stage you finally okay it happens ah basi ikipitia hiyo unajaribu kusema nini nasa itafanyika the next thing we have to do is forgive them kiti ya ya muhimu ni mwishowe tukubali kuwasamehe now when we forgiven someone it doesn't mean that you forget it some people say forgive and forget that's that's erroneous that doesn't happen ah uh, tukisamea watu haimaanishi kwamba tumesahau watu wengine wanasemanga kwamba samee na usahau hiyo hiyo ni ngumu haiwezi kufanyika hivyo unasamea unasamea forgiving this means that there's no pain involved ah uh, kusamea haimaanishi kwamba kuna uchungu ndani mwetu I have a small scar here uh, between my thumb and my finger. When that happened there was quite a bit of pain. But 
Na basi nikiangalia ile alama kwa sababu ina ukumbusho. Na ninajua kilichofanyika lakini haileti uchungu tena. So our memory is designed to be a map for us for our life. Ah ah kile zetu ni 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 ramani katika maisha yetu. And when the cooks uh when they cook food and it comes together well then they remember how they did that and they can duplicate that next time. Ah wacha wakati chakula kimeandaliwa na ikafaulu kuwa nzuri basi inatupa tena mrudia wa mawazo siku nyingine tukifanya tunajua kilichokuwa inafanywa ndio kikawa zuri when you're going through life and you do something and it doesn't go well you remember that to guide you next time uh, ukipitia jambo katika mawazo na haikufaulu kwenda vizuri inatuongoza ili tusirudie tena hali hiyo siku nyingine but you don't want your memory to have pain in it because it affects how you do things. Aha, na usiruhusu mawazo yako kutembea na uchungu maana itaadhiri utendakazi wako. So in a nutshell here if you want to live in the negative energy zone of two choice. Ah basi uamuzi ni wako ukitaka kuishi maisha ambayo imevutwa ni uamuzi wako. Pretend to be somebody you are. Ah uh, unajaribu kujidanganya kuwa mimi ni vile nilivyo. We tend to be doing good things for people and really you're trying to get their money or you're trying Aha, unajaribu kujidanganya ya kwamba ni unawasaidia watu lakini ukweli ni kwamba unataka kugunja hao kuchukua pesa kutoka kwa wao. Or you're trying to take control of them like the gas leak. Aha, ama unajaribu kuwaongoza kwa udanganyifu. Refuse to forgive people that have hurt you. Ah, uh, unakataa kuwasamea watu ambao walikuumiza. Refuse to accept uh, the bad things that have happened to you, right? Unakataa kukubali mambo ambayo yamekupata yaliyo mabaya. But you're going to have to accept that when you live in a negative zone, you have all this anxiety, regret, despair, hopelessness. Lakini lazima ukubali matokeo haya ya kwamba utaishi katika hali ya wasiwazi, hali ya kujilaumu, hali ya kutokuwa na 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 ukweli ndani mwako and if you want to come to the higher zone just start becoming honest ukitaka kupanda juu ni lazima kuwa mkweli start saying hey i i've got some trauma in my life i need to be kubali ya kwamba ukweli ni kwamba nimepitia hiyo hali ya msongo wa mawazo except what has happened to you in the past ukubali kilichokukufanyikia except what you have done to other people in the past kubali ambao umetendea watu wengine ambaye ni vibaya kwa watu wengine ask for forgiveness and give forgiveness basi waendee na waombe msamaha na wakusamee and then number 10 i have one more illustration nambari ya 10 ana anajaribu kuelezea the eagle that soars the highest has two good wings and wind resistance ah huyu tai anayeruka juu anaenda juu kwa ma, ma, mapawa mawili yaliyo mazuri ili ku, ku, kustamili upepo yeah. ili kustamili upepo so there's a certain mawili yeah there's a certain species of eagle that when the baby is almost ready to fly the mother comes down and tears up the nest aha anasema kuna tai aina nyingine ya tai ya kwamba wakati mtoto anakaribia kuanza kuruka anakuja na mtoa katika kiota and the nest kiota na basi inaanza kuwa hali ya kutoridhisha kwa mtoto now the babies are crowded around the edge um, watoto wanasimamia karibu na na mwisho wake maana anaweza kuanguka the mother eagle comes and pushes one off anakuja wakati mtoto amesimama pale mwisho anamsukuma and our natural tendency is to fall off in fear Ah uh, eh, kawaida yake ni kwamba ni kufunga mtoto alizoea kufunga mapawa. The mother they think I'm going to crash I'm going to die. Ah uh, anafikiri ya kwamba nitaanguka nitakufa. But the mother swoops under the baby and picks it up on her back and takes it up in the air. Basi mama akiona kweli ya kwamba mtoto huyu aweze kujisaidia anakuja anaenda chini yake mtoto anaanza kwa mgongo wake na anambeba tena anamrudisha kwa ile kiota. She turns sideways and the baby falls off. Na na anafanya hivi tena anapinduka mtoto tena anaanguka. But eventually the baby begins to put out its wings. Basi mshoe mtoto anaona haya hapa lazima nijitetee anafungua mikono. This has probably happened to you in life. You felt like you were going to die, right? Aha, wakati mwingine inafanyikia wewe hivyo 
unahisi ya kwamba hata kukufa unaweza kufa aha bwana mungu anakuja wakati huu anakukuinua na hapo basi unaanza kujua jinsi ya kuji aha mkono haya ni kuonesha kwamba unaamini umekubali kuchukuliwa na hii ingine ni kuamini I surrender to the bad thing that happened to me. Ninawachilia kile ambacho kimenifanyikia. That's not enough. Can an eagle fly with one wing? Na je, hiyo inatosha kwa sababu unaweza kuruka kweli na na tai inaweza ruka na mkono mmoja. It starts doing the downward spiral. Ah, basi kwa sababu hiyo itaanza kutoka mkono mmoja. Have you ever done the downward spiral in life? Ni wakati wewe umejaribu hiyo katika maisha. So we have to trust that God is going to lead us basi katika kuachilia mkono huo mwingine ni lazima tuachilie mkono wa kumwamini kwamba Bwana Mungu atatushikilia. When we surrender and trust, wakati tunajiajilia na kuamini, for the eagle, the air currents hold the, the baby up. Na hiyo basi inaweza kuokoa kama vile mtoto wa Tai anavyookolewa. For the believer, the grace of God holds holds. Na kwa waaminio, neema ya Mungu inawashikilia. As you learn to surrender and trust. Na wakati unajifunza kujipeana na kuamini. I'm told the old eagles will set up on their nest and when the storm comes they get kind of excited. The, the old eagles. Tai wale wazee tai wale wazee wanaweza kufunga uh, mikono yao na uh, kufunga mapawa zao na wakati wa upepo ukikuja inawaangusha. Because they know when there's a storm, they can launch out into the storm. They're strong enough. They can put their wings out and they can fly higher and faster. Oh, anasema sijaeleza vile vizuri. Anasema wao wanajua ya kwamba upepo mkubwa wa toruba ikikuja wana nguvu ya kutosha na wanaweza ruka na kwenda juu kuepuka ile ile toruba. So they no longer fear the storms ili wasiweze kusikia ile toruba. Hmm? I wanna walk at ten na ile mawimbi. Yes. And we don't have to fear the storms of life either. We don't have to live in fear. Ah uh, basi tukijua hivyo hatuhitaji tena kuishi katika hali ya uoga. Because when the storm comes, maana uh, toruba ikikuja, we surrender our life to God. Tunapeana mapawa yetu ama tunapeana maisha yetu kwa Bwana. We trust God and speak the act the truth. Na tunaamini Bwana ya kwamba tunasema ukweli. We soar up on the currents of grace. Tunaanza kukuruka katika imani ya neema. And we find out that the problem is below us. Na basi tunaanza kutazama na matatizo yetu yakiwa chini yetu tunaruka juu. We're living above our problems. Tunaruka juu ya matatizo zetu. And that's where we all want to be. Na hivyo ndio kile kilivyo. I'm convinced of that. Tunaamini hivyo. Now, how many of you want to do your exercise? Ah, wangapi wote wangetaka tufanye ile mazoezi yetu ya kila siku? Put your two fists out. Hold them real tight. Can you receive anything? So say I choose to release my disappointments. I choose to release my pain. I choose to allow God to control my life. I choose to live in forgiveness. I choose to live in love. I choose to receive the blessings of God. May God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bow down in appreciation. Lord, seeing that you have loved us so much, that you are giving us these words free of judge. Things which are so deep, so deep that we could not find it anywhere. Thank you, Lord, for these words. We ask the Holy Spirit to write these things into our hearts, to fix in our hearts, so that we live by these teachings. Thank you for our speaker. Add him more wisdom, so that he may give us all that we need to pursue this life and succeed at the end of time. 
thank you, Lord. Give us a wonderful day and let us surrender unto God who is able to take us the height he wants us to be. Thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Glory to God. Glory to God. I think to call our announcements come at Tatu. Thursday, and Australia, and for further studies. He's going on. When is the day? Oh, he's going on Thursday. But on Thursday next week, we're having a farewell party for her daughter. Is going to Australia. So as a family, we need to be there. Where is the venue, Mr. Lamai? <laughs> Pentecostal Church. Oh, yes, yes. We shall be there celebrating and also advising our daughter because he's going to another country. I think Diana will give a good advice. Steward is here and also how to add value so that it can be valuable in, you, in that area. You need to be there. Another announcement is because of our neighbor. Our neighbor, I, as a family, let's just have a courtesy and also have some contribution. We can select one person. If we can just decide who to collect the contribution because they are having that function, we need to do that. And also for Lamai Fairway, for the daughter, anybody who has something should channel the contribution to Audrey. Audrey is here. Can you stand? I think Kipchumba, because he's here full time, he can uh, handle the burial thing. Oh, okay. Yes, Kipchumba. Anybody who comes here, you can contribute to Kipchumba for the funeral. After this, I want to select some few people to go to to, to condone with the family of uh, the late Muse. I think we can go with Diana, Mama Margaret, Bishop, Lamai, Village Elder, Pastor Lodwa, and Muse Chemanur, and also Pastor Steve. <laughs> A few people can go there. We make a prayer there, and then anybody at your own time, you can go there. Thank you so much. We have milk card. Milk card will expire within one hour. If you have milk card, you can go to Prove Express and have uh, and have breakfast. You're welcome. On Thursday, make sure you, we celebrate with Mr. Lamai. Afternoon. Afternoon. Yeah. Afternoon. If you don't know that place, you can come here, and then we can go together. Yes. Oh yeah, just put the pin. Yeah, I'm the group. Oh, I'm told that when you are Japata milk cards, so I will not find your milk card. You see this guy. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Your heart is too small to carry the whole world that has hurt you. Flash it out. It all And remember, in 2014, I remember in 2014, when, when, when that doctor, the doctor who told the man that you, you seem to be developing some blindness, that doctor he went through was very honest. Because the doctor told him, no, but I don't see any complications in your eye. I want to see a doctor somewhere because I had some itching in my skin. He took uh, uh, my whatever into the laboratory. He came and told me. You have eight infections. You need to begin treatment now. You need to pay eight thousand. So the, the, the down payment was four thousand. And he said, the moment you begin the treatment, stop taking milk. And meat. The things I like. Yeah, <laughs> 